But we have we have uh, we have four presenters uh, uh, this morning, um, and we'll be getting started in about a second. I think we have everybody here. Even Lydia's here. I'm a research professor at New Jersey Institute of Technology. I, I run our master's program in emergency management and business continuity. Um, we do a lot of, lot of work in the, the homeland security and homeland defense mission space. Uh, infrastructure is certainly, uh, is certainly one, one of them. Uh, our, our particular direction in, in, in our program is, is heavily involved with information systems, information technology, and the enabling effect of technologies on the four dimensions of emergency management. Today we're going to be hearing from uh, William, uh, I think it's Talone, um, Scott Perry, Douglas Marksveen, and Mike Risper from the uh, United States Military Academy. We'll, we'll start off with uh, William, who's going to talk about integrated analytics, understanding critical infrastructure behaviors for resilience analysis. A little bit of background on William. Um, William is an associate professor in the Department of Software and Information Systems within the College of Computing and Informatics at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. Uh, he is the UNC Charlotte Project Director and Lead Investigator for the Critical Infrastructure Integration Modeling and Simulation Project. I guess it started in 2003 to the, to the present time. His area of specialization, uh, Integrated Modeling and Simulation, Critical Infrastructure Analysis and Protection, Visual Analytics, Agent-Based Integration, Collaborative Systems, and Meta-Level Architectures. He has about uh, 50 uh, plus referee publications and has been, on, uh, has been an investigator on federally funded projects from the National Science Foundation, DOD, uh, NIST, and DHS with total extra um, mural funding of over 21 million, nearly 11 million as lead investigator. Uh, UNC Charlotte is designated by the National Security Agency and DHS as a, a national center of academic um, excellence in information assurance education. If uh, some of you aren't familiar with the uh, CAE program in information assurance, it's a good program. It, it allows scholarships for, for undergraduate, graduate, PhD students um, pursuing information assurance uh, subject matter. And it also makes available jobs after they're all, after they're all done with the program. So that's pretty neat. Um, UNC Charlotte is also a partner in two uh, Department of Homeland Security Centers of Excellence, the Center for National Disasters, or Natural Disasters, Coastal Infrastructure and Emergency Management, and the Visual Analytics for Command Control and Interoperability Environments, uh, which is really centered at Purdue University, so you're, you're partnering with them in that, in that particular effort. Okay, so, so, so William, it's, it's, it's yours. Thank you. Appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, talk with you this morning about some work that we've been doing, some research we've been doing over the past eight years. Uh, as I uh, learned yesterday, we need to kind of be talking not just to the broader community, but also to the uh, students and cadets that might be in the audience. Uh, so what do I hope you take away from this, this talk? Well, first of all, I hope that you realize that there are some problems that are a special type and what, what are called wicked problems. And, if you're not familiar with that term, maybe you'll have a better understanding as you leave this talk. There are strategies for managing wicked problems, and I'll talk a little bit about that. In particular, how those strategies uh, are supported within the, uh, the research that we've been doing. Uh, all of the types of analysis that we support, we come at that analysis from the perspective that it's important to do the analysis in context. And so uh, we'll be motivating that aspect uh, or, or that uh, philosophy. Hopefully you'll understand the difference between trying to understand the behaviors of critical infrastructures and how that is similar and different than understanding the behaviors of models of critical infrastructures. 
And there's some subtle differences there that are important. And then finally, hopefully, you'll understand our methodology. And you'll see how that methodology is being realized within an environment called the view environment. So here's an outline of, uh, of the uh, talk. Uh, how many people are familiar with the term wicked problem here? OK, some. Terrific. Uh, for those that are not familiar, uh, wicked problems are a special class of problems. These are problems where it's hard to define the problem itself and for which the solutions have relative quality. Uh, the solution space is open. Uh, there's uncertainty in the definition of the problem, in the definition of the solution. There's a lot of dependencies that exist in these types of problems. Uh, they tend to have high dimensionality. And they are for problems where we can't afford bad solutions. It's our contention that critical infrastructure analysis in general is a wicked problem. And, uh, and hopefully you'll, you'll see that as we move forward. Maybe I'm already preaching to the choir. Uh, Roberts has proposed some strategies for dealing with wicked problems, how we manage them. We don't necessarily advocate any one type of strategy, but what I present them here today so that you see how these just strategies can be uh, supported within our methodology and within the environment that, that we've researched and developed. The three strategies, by the way, are authoritative strategies, competitive strategies, and collaborative strategies. Authoritative strategies try to manage the problem by simplifying the problem. Competitive try to take a, a more of a, you could say, a market-based approach. We want competition to inspire inquiry and innovation, and hopefully we get better solutions out of that type of a strategy. And collaborative is, let's see if we can create synergistic solutions. Work towards one solution as opposed to competing solution and have that one solution have a uh, uh, be much better because of that synergy that results. So, critical infrastructure as a wicked problem. Characteristics that we probably all would uh, agree to that we see in critical infrastructures and the sy and systems of critical infrastructures. And the result of these characteristics is we have systems that are open. They have uh, nonlinear behavior. They have complex emergent structure. Uh, and so we need to. It, it's very difficult to understand how they might. Uh, react and how they behave, particularly in the face of change. And we can't say anything about resilience uh, or too much about resilience if we can't say something about how that infrastructure changes in the face of disruption. Modeling and simulation has long been a favored uh, approach to try to understand, make sense of these very complex problems. And so our models are going to have these same characteristics, uh, or, or hopefully they will have those same characteristics. But they have other things that confound the problem. They have uncertainty, they have sparkness, sparseness, they have inaccuracies, right? they are, have different levels of fidelity, they have biases. And so when we are trying to make sense of wicked prob uh, a wicked problem like the behavior and, and structure of critical infrastructures, we also have to make sense of their models. So we're trying to understand what's going on over here in the real world, but we view that through collections of models. And that's where my research comes into play. We have developed methods and techniques.